Hello, I'm going to talk about the use of social media as part of the excavations at Mechlionith. Um, if you're live tweeting while you're in here, the Twitter handle for the excavation and my own are in the bottom corner there. Um, Oh, and by the way, I'm going to have to leave right after this paper um, because I have another paper right after this. So if there are any questions, feel free to either send a tweet or just quickly ask me before I run out that door. Um, okay, uh, to give you an idea about the excavation, Mechlionith is a double ringwork enclosure near Rue on the Chleen Peninsula in northwest Wales. The Chleen is indicated by the red square on the map, in case you don't know where that is. Uh, double ringwork enclosures are um, settlements which have two banks running around them. The banks are built out of earth and stone, and they have uh, a couple of roundhouses in the middle. Um, you can actually see the bank quite, banks quite well on the aerial photograph. They're not <laughs> that visible if you're actually in the field. The site dates to the late Bronze Age and Iron Age, which is a period during which hardly any ceramic is used uh, in Wales. And also the soils are very acidic, so we don't really have many finds because uh, organic components decompose quite quickly and iron corrodes very badly. However, we do have very well preserved features on the site, so it's not like we don't find anything. Oh, and we do have quite a lot of stone tools. I never thought I would dig Iron Age and find that many stone tools. Uh, the excavation started in 2010. It's a field school for students from Bangui University, but also from other national and international universities, and we also accept volunteers. Now, I said earlier, we <laughs> hardly have any fines, uh, which luckily doesn't mean that we don't have anything we could show off on the internet except for the usual documentation pictures we also take a lot of pictures of the team at work which are always nice to uh, promote the excavation in the field school but also to show the whole archaeological process we also create 3d models of the trenches the features and the few very interesting finds we do have so oh yeah and uh on the top left corner of the slide is a 3D reconstruction of one of the settlement phases, which was done by a couple of colleagues from ours from Austria. So there is quite a lot that is, um, or that gives us a couple of nice images for one for a website. The website is part of the Bangui University website. It contains information about the site as well as the field school. We have information about our outreach activities. We publish reports uh, on the website. And we also have the 3D models of trenches and pines on there, which can be downloaded as a PDF file. Overall, the site, which is bilingual in English and Welsh, because that's the language policy for the Welsh universities. Um, the site is very scientific, has all the relevant facts and information on the excavation as well as the field school. And since August 2013, we also have a Facebook page which uh, focuses not as strongly on the scientific facts as the website. Of course, the facts are on there as well. But on the Facebook page, we try to give a fuller picture 
of the excavation as an experience rather than just of the hard scientific facts. We post pictures of features of finds, uh, our action shots, so basically photos uh, of the team at work. We write progress reports during the excavation, but also uh, post information about outreach events, our post-excavation work, interpretation of the results, and so on. And we also do share posts from other pages that we think might be of interest to our followers. We usually update the Facebook site from a desktop computer. I mean, I know there are uh, possibilities to do it from mobile devices, but since our posts usually are a bit longer and also contain images which were either created on a computer like the 3D models or were taken with the digital cameras, it's much easier to just do it on the computer. We have, well, as of Tuesday, we had 432 likes. And thanks to the Facebook statistics, we know that our site is equally, well, more or less equally popular with both, both sexes. 52% of likes come from women and 46% from men. We have followers of all age groups, with the majority being between 25 and 34 years old. This is probably due to the fact that we have a lot of former field school students who still follow us. Since the excavation is conducted by a British university, and, well, is located in the UK, it's probably no surprise that most of our followers come from the UK. And that we have a lot of Austrian followers is due to the fact that the excavation was also run as a field school at the University of Vienna for a while. Um, but as you can see, we do have followers from more or less all over the world. The most activity on the site is between June, the month June, July, and August, which is probably because that's the time where the excavation takes place. So that's also the time where we post the most um, original content about the excavation. And since 2014, we also have a Twitter account. Um, the content is pretty much the same as on the Facebook site. It is also set up in the way that every tweet gets automatically shared on the Facebook site as well. We usually update Twitter through mobile devices. Um, in the first year, we tweeted live from the trenches. That's where the title for this pr uh, presentation comes from. However, this year, we couldn't <coughs> quite get a mobile signal on site. So unfortunately, we had to stop that. We're still writing the tweets but they during the day, but they only get sent out when we get back to the accommodation at night. We have 202 followers on Twitter. Some of them follow us on Facebook as well as on Twitter. To know what our um, followers are interested in, I did a short survey among the uh, followers of our social media pages, as well as among students from Bangor University and volunteers and field school students who had been on the dig previously. The survey was distributed through Facebook and Twitter, but also through email. And I got 27 responses, which unfortunately isn't quite representative but it still gives us a general idea about what people like about our site and whatnot. Um, I, 20, no, sorry, 69% uh, of the respondents were female, 31 male, and all age groups except the one over 70 were represented with the majority of people taking the survey being 
either under 20 or 20 to 30 years of age compared to the Facebook statistic that shows that women are slightly overrepresented as well as um, the age groups under 20 and what's the other one uh, 61 to 70 but since I didn't get that many responses um, yeah that doesn't really say a lot um, most people follow us on Facebook or on Facebook and Twitter. However, there are a few people who only follow us on Twitter, which shows that we need to share our content on both pages. And reasons for following the project and social media were uh, mainly that people were interested in news about the excavation project, but also about archaeology in general. Oh, and by the way, the people who said that they do not follow the excavation on social media also said in a follow-up question that they do not use social media. Um, yeah, so I asked what people like most, most about the site and nearly half of them mentioned the interpretation of excavation results. And a quarter of the participants said the pictures of the team at work. I also asked what people would like to see more of. And that was mainly uh, interpretation of excavation results or information about the post-excavation work. I did ask what people do not like about the site as well, and there were two responses to that, and both named the action shots. Um, one of them said that not all members of the team seem to be represented equally on those shots, and another one thought that the pictures are a bit too silly, because yes, seeing how the Facebook site is supposed to show uh, the experience of being on the field school, there are quite a few silly pictures, I have to admit that. Um, but seeing how 24% of the respondents also said those pictures are what they like best about the site, um, we're not going to change um, anything regarding to which pictures we put up. And regarding the fact that not all team members are represented equally well, not all students are on the dig for the full eight weeks, so naturally those who stay there longer um, will have more pictures of them taken and probably uploaded than others. Also, there are some students who do not like to have their picture taken or outright refuse, and we do have to respect that as well. We also asked whether people would like to see the excavation on other social media channels and the majority said no. 24% said that they would like to see the excavation on other channels. Um, however, only three mentioned Instagram, Instagram or Tumblr, um, seeing how most people uh, do not seem to use any other social media pages uh, rather than Facebook and Twitter, or at least don't want necessarily want to see the universe uh, the excavation on any others. We're not planning on adding more social media uh, pages. Um, yeah, I would like to. Uh, end with a couple of um, advantages and disadvantages of the use of social media. I haven't been here before because I had to be at another session, so I'm hoping I'm not repeating too much. <laughs> um, first of all, social media is very time consuming. Um, as we could see, people are not just following, or people are not following you on all your social media pages necessarily, so you have to update all of them. The more you have, the more time it consumes. Um, they're also available 24-7, and a lot of people use them out of office hours. For example, the Facebook statistics show that 
for the Mechleonith excavation, most people who have liked that page are online between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. And since social media is a medium where you can get responses quickly, people usually um, expect to get responses quickly, even out of office hours. So you might have to be prepared to spend a lot of time of your free time to update those pages as well. There are also potential copyright issues. Um, first of all, considering your own content, but also content of others that you might want to put online. Um, the information you put online is available for everyone straight away and you have no control over what other people do with it, um, how it's shared or reused. And I don't know if it really is true, but I have a feeling that people have less concern about using something that they get for free off of the internet rather than something they have to copy out of a book. So your content might be used more freely than it would be otherwise. There are also privacy concerns regarding social media. As I mentioned earlier, not everybody uses social media and wants to use social media. So you need to make sure that the, uh, the information you put on social media is also available on other pages, websites and so on. Um, the advantages of social media, for example, are that you have an international audience and that the share and retweet functions of those sites make it easier to share content and also reach more people than you would um, if you would just use your website. Um, it's also a simple outreach tool because, again, it's information you can share easily with a lot of other people. And also, I think that was mentioned before because I saw a tweet about that, I think. Um, social media is also an easy tool to distribute visual information, which is um, very good for archaeology because all the pictures I showed you on the second slide, we have a lot of nice pictures we can show, which are um, maybe for the general audience much more interesting than just a very dry archaeological report and that can help us to share information about archaeology and get people interested and with that thank you for your attention